Over the last few weeks, Pete and Kevin have been working on getting their 20 liter supercharged hand built V12 engine up and running after several years of hibernation. This is one of Kevin and Pete's bizarre homemade engine designs that was a prototype originally intended for the use in an H1 unlimited hydroplane. The development of this 20 liter V12 included the help of Kevin Aylesworth and Jeff Johnson. This massive gasoline powered beast measures nearly 1200 cubic inches of displacement with a five and five eighths inch bore and a four inch stroke. In this video, you will see Kevin and Pete start and run the engine and they will explain how the project came about and what they plan to do with it in the future. Kevin and Pete are true automotive masterminds and are capable of doing pretty much anything they desire. We hope you enjoy this opportunity to see this engine in action. being this noisy yeah <laughs> well that means he could still hear yeah <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe it cleared him out yeah yeah you think <laughs> jesus that thing rumbles i think you still got a oh is that your water pump running yeah so I thought wow i think it's pretty impressive oh, it's gonna take a big radiator to cool it kevin yeah. <laughs> that's like a heater core warm Wow, you can feel the heat radiating yeah. off of two this or, bad two boy. Two or three huh? of those. Huh? <laughs> so, did it go as planned, Kevin? We yeah. We don't much. have a boost yeah. gauge on it, do we? Um, well, it, electronically, not not the way it is now. <laughs> we should put a mechanical one on it. I mean, it measures the boost pressure with the computer. So, that'll be all here. <laughs> well, we can put one anywhere, right? Well, we, um, you could, well, that's the blow off valve, but, but um, well, you can put a grade in here, right? Yeah, I guess you could. That'd be easy. Need a uh, small gauge, low numbers. So, Pete, what's the uh, plan with this? What's it, what are you going to do with this? Well, I bought that in old international truck. Um, you saw uh, it, right? Yeah, the out truck there. out there, the chassis, and uh, it's a uh, 2004 three-quarter ton chevrolet chassis uh-huh 
unfortunately the steering for the international is here and turns and the one for the GM is here and it turns this way so we got to figure out some way to connect those two to so you're thinking about putting this in a street vehicle yeah like a Leno type truck okay big truck or not a oh. big truck but you can go take pictures of it yeah uh, this will be like your Home Depot truck yeah kind of like a Home <laughs> Depot truck some or a big old engine in the back though <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome and now, so how many years did it take the from concept to final? Well, we, we started like say in 2014, and then I believe we actually got it running in 2016, and it's kind of sat for for a while. We lost our dyno. The guy lost his house. Uh huh. I bought the dyno and gave it to him, and he lost the house in foreclosure, and there went our dyno. Oh, bummer. And it's to go from here. To where it needs to go is a ton of work. Building the engine is kind of easy, really. Just nothing bolts and machining. <laughs> yeah. But okay. tuning this thing to make 3,000 horsepower in a boat that has to run wide open for 15 minutes, that's a real challenge. Yeah. You're, you got to make three horsepower per cubic inch. Three times 12? Yeah. Three per inch. And it's got to hold up without breaking for three for 15 minutes. Full throttle in a boat under a full load. You just gotta do it four, four to five times a weekend like that. <laughs> four to five times every week. It's like going uphill in second gear, full throttle. Yeah. For 15 minutes. Yeah. Oh. It's just, just too many uh, variables and there. Big huh? pistons and big rods and heavy. Everything's heavy and big. And it's got to run 6,000 to make that kind of horsepower. It's, it's going to be tough. Yeah. And that's where the work comes in. You got to spend every day on a dyno, change the cam, change the valve, timing. Uh, too much. So many variables, and you can't do one at a time. You don't have to do only one at a time because if you do two, you don't know which one made the difference, yeah. right? Play with the cam timing, play with the timing, go back to the, what it was. I mean, it's a lot Next, of Kevin's going to explain a little more about the engine and how did this design come about? Like, what well, was we, the process? Well, the idea was we were going to build an engine for unlimited hydroplanes, try to something that would work instead of the turbines. Uh -huh. And what ended up happening is we got, um, I, I wanted to build it, but then Pete um, said, well, he didn't you know, really want to take it on by himself. So uh, I talked to Kevin Aylesworth and his, at the time his partner, Jim, uh, Jeff Johnson, and um, they decided they wanted in on the deal too. They would, they basically bought most of the parts Okay. And then Pete paid me my, my labor. So you for and doing Pete it. those built yeah. a Pete's shop and yeah. you did and all yeah. the machine and then work I, on it. I designed it loosely based off of uh, the sheet metal motor we did and uh, Allison aircraft engine. The Allison aircraft engine has about the same bore sp spacing that this is. Okay. And uh, and then we ended up uh, some of the, the rock arm geometry is copied from an Allison. It's a little different because we only have three valves per cylinder. And we put the, the test two valve, uh, spark plugs per cylinder and we put those on either side of the exhaust valve. Um, the reason I wanted to get two spark plugs per cylinder is because the bore uh, diameter is uh, five and five eighths. Such a big diameter, I want the time for the flame front to travel. Okay. And this so, is uh, 20 liters of displacement, you said, approximately, uh, or uh, roughly? It's 1196 cubic inches, I believe, which, wow. so it's pretty close to... Pretty close to that. Yeah. Cool. So, and it's set up, now you guys have run it before when you first fired up. Did, do you remember what the numbers were, like on the dyno and stuff like that? Well, we ran it one time on the dyno. I believe we, we only got it up to about seven pounds of boost. And, I believe we are making 1500 horsepower. Okay. So we never really cranked uh, it up. Never put the pulleys on it. I mean, we, you know, there was some design learning uh, a few things about it. Um, some of the things we're, we're learning now still. So it's, it's a, a work in progress. So on the, um, is this put together similar to the way you do your others? Is this, it's got a girdle and well, Put this has sections, a, a, is different in that it has kind of a, a crankcase, more like a Harley Davidson is, where the um, the cylinders actually bolt onto the crankcase, 
it also has a girdle underneath it but then the cylinders are separate and then the head is separate on top of that so there's actually you know basically three layers and these are built filter and superchargers these are twin um, yeah they're vortex superchargers awesome these look like are these like gm style ignition coils yeah those are gm ignition coils i don't remember what the final ratio was is i think it's like a 24 to 1. but then you know then we have the adjustment with these pulleys here this is kind of set up for full boost we were actually going to run it on a dyno with an in-between size just to get the fuel curve right and then go to these and i was just setting this up so that we could adjust these but you know you don't want to go full boost with the full <laughs> yeah so so it was three you said it was ains was that eight ainsworth Ailsworth. Ailsworth. okay yeah kevin Ailsworth. kevin Ailsworth. he's he he put um like I say basically bought all the parts um he had a partner jeff john 